This is lecture two of Giuseppe Balsamo's The Necromancy of Nyarlathotep. And we discussed in our last lecture the ontologies of Lovecraft's Nyarlathotep. Now we'll move on to um, key aspects of Lovecraftian, and I call it reluctant gnosis, related to uh, discoveries from Moldenhauer's psychoanalysis of Rilia with its introduction to the Providence cipher and the Necronomicon fragment. So Moldenhauer does attempt to do some study in these texts, but we want to really approach them um, uh, the Necronomicon fragment especially which is said to be a Rillian script in the dialect of the Black Goat of the Woods but we also can see this as a manifestation of the crawling chaos itself so this is a let's begin with breaking this lecture into two topics. One will be about the Necronomicon fragment from the Katu journals and how it relates to Nyarlathotep and the Crawling Chaos. And the second topic will be a revisiting of the Katu journals text that's referred to as the Providence Cipher, uh, which relates to Sleeping Cthulhu, but also uh, may have been a kind of ritual of Nyarlathotep's modern-day cult of the crawling chaos. So is it, a, is it a text to Cthulhu, or is it a analysis or a invocation through Sleeping Cthulhu by the crawling chaos cult? And this is sort of like we can figure, finish the, the second half of the lecture on that. So will we begin with the Necronomicon fragment of the Katu journals uh, for this lecture? The fragment is divided into uh, a number of layers. And the eight layers are... Um, given commentary by Moldenhauer uh, in his psychoanalysis of Aurelia. And if we go through these, uh, we see the first layer is a very small fragment, but it has te pirel, sve, nyai, lorene, hengye, lepata, nigobla, sect, taunt, Lankman, Natalmol, Tretiti, Snopta, Dozd, Ria. It says, among the legible words, we find Rungmal, an invocation for an alien type of digestion. And Hungye is a mutation with a cell that excretes a powerful acid. And Natalmol, a somniferous enzyme that can be activated telegraphically. One possible reading of as the excretions former thought or forgotten identity giving way to shnapabalye, the awakening in what is described by the adjectival doslinsen or the crystalline the final result as the rienarth or the processing of matriculation so here what is matriculating right so there is uh, uh, it has concepts of body horror right it has concepts of the the sleeping nature of the biological processes right it's a world of the body and this uh, this has much to do with uh, just I think in relation that there is much forgotten in the soul's binding to the body and there's much uh, connectivity to the soul and the body. And that the awakening has to relate to this. So there's an awakening that happens where one becomes a bit more aware of, 
Uh, it's like the William S. Burroughs quote where he says that the alien is your own digestive tract. And I mean, this is quite great. We have the gut biome. We have lots of interesting things about our bodies, right? And I think that this is something that there is a kind of a chaos to it. Think of the fear. Uh, think of uh, Da Vinci having to be a grave robber to go study human anatomy because of all the uh, prejudices and superstitions around it. Because there's a, hor a horror to opening up an, a living animal and finding these um, pathways and materials and the fact that it's combined with the horror of having a body and the horror of uh, being a body and eating flesh right these are all kinds of but I think this is a, a again it's a fear-based view of, of the concept because in another way this is a harmonious uh, containment right the interesting relation back to Nyarlathotep here is as the crawling chaos, you know, he's often depicted with the, the tentacles beneath the robes, right? So he's a, he's a pharaonic figure, but under the robes, there's the tentacles. And this is, again, inside the body. We have the tentacles, right? The digestive tract and, and um, or even the, uh, the fleshy mammalian minds, as Lovecraft calls it, but just the, 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 the flesh of the brain can have a quite fearful view of it when seen through the lens of superstition. Uh, you know, uh, uh, in opposition, materially, if we look at it from a t materialistic, from an enlightenment science point of view, there's kind of a beauty and a nobility to it, right? This idea of how all of this sort of evolves forward to bring a, a sentient being. And it also is a marker in the, you know, the amazing variety of life. But to use the Lovecraftian sort of perversion, I guess, where he would say, well, if there's things that are noble, what about the things that are ignoble or the things that are frightening? And I think that these all just tie back into the, the body fears. This processing or matriculation is also something that's strange where we're talking about, um, um, you know, in the cycle of the human uh, or animal existence, let's call it, in the cycle of animal existence. There's rules to be followed. Uh, but at the same time, when we view them from an astral point of view, you can sort of see that these were set up as background systems. So I believe that you can uh, tune beyond these levels and the body then becomes just a, uh, a cared for repository for your true the true soul so i think that there's something interesting here in this um in this fragment and again it's very chaotic but we can move on now let's move on to the necronomicon fragment two which is mescter aneth tloli ople as if eptio negrith oxditrit Has koiskyo beliskia tomosai naghamnarim mepa kansel nextja lai pi drala pisnat waywood ti lipi pigalnis gokseronol eat mo snakto cho int nyeser dimtrox no scraplumo in Print and che, ned ment and learn ribbon ritness. Mill ment, rathamusel, crumpelil, I will de, osh onorangem, egia nor tonginia, Leroy le blepchak, nimbragnigup, nuaka sterni, guaterai hun, guninguti cotia. Saroa Venezo Kalenzi Batast Selengat Hansadna Natar Niwaknil Prinquil Shlonti Leg Uo Ie Mek Prikirku Neslard Neswut Soarinkle Nasen Strindi Genen Thelenreth Lapunuch noto. 
And for this second fragment, uh, Moldenhauer discusses the Lilorai Liprognagnoth, is the celestial lamentation of the Miponongoip, the gate of slumber, where Gwetriai Hun, being a kind of onyx of Selapheus. So Selapheus here is the dreamlands, city in the dreamlands. So again, we're having a celestial lamentation at the gates of slumber. So yeah, there is a sort of um, a, a whole world, and it's it's explored somewhat in the alchemical writings, uh, in the alchemical wedding, uh, the alchemical courtship novels, uh, that this is sort of the onyx of Selafius. Again, the onyx of Selafius, onyx, uh, interesting. The final sentence of layer two is the few near complete phrases. Salanis gat hanesnar natal. Nirvata Priklin Shanti Leg Uo Ie Mikarot Nizlard Nawasya Rilengse Strindigne Talaratalum Tiknyoto. But mouth your mouth but not yours bowed at the knee, carnal and bereft of the seven thousand, the sheaved bull, the statuary creature decides, not negotiates, a feral state, a grudge of antagonism, regal defined provisioned and excised so yes again here is the mouth is not yours is about lower writing you know so this is the idea that um, not only again tying it back to Nyarlathotep uh, yeah there's this theme that it's not only astral okay so this is what you're gonna have to um, grasp is that as the spirit populates the flesh there are still things that can go into the astral, right? So there's an astral disembodied dark forest, let's say, where the astral beings are hunted and, and possessed. So your mouth is not yours. That means even when we think back to the soul craft, we might want to be checking out some things about uh, uh, partial souls or uh, fragmented souls or reused souls, like the residual en energies of uh, rebirthed souls, uh, some kind of lingering nature there. So, bowed at the knee, carnal and bereft of the 7,000, the sheaved bull, the statuary creature decides and not negotiates. So, the statuary creature here is the, it's kind of the idol, but it's also the, you know, the, um, you know, the, the white marbled vampire queen, something like this, right? In the breaking of that form, this is the grudge of antagonism, the regal defined provision and excised. So there's a feral state not negotiated um, inside of this worship to these idols whose mouth are, is not yours. And again, crawling chaos comes back in. So again, it's kind of a weird fear-based uh, ana analog to speaking in tongues, I suppose. Uh, that's a crawling chaos metaphor that works. Uh, and then I just have to call out to this gateway, right? The gate of slumber. You know, the chaos of the dreamlands would have a strange um, uh, order to it that people would not be f familiar to. That could be that celestial lamentation of the, uh, you know, the five dimensional uh, or six dimensional even, the six dimension of permutation and potentiality, like a delusion potentiality, like the rhizome of sleep, the rhizome of dreams. And there's probably some kind of technology from Silithaeus, which could be pre-Lemurian, which is uh, represented in the onyx, like the onyx may be a technology to that kind of uh, a celestial gate of slumber. So that's uh, that will wrap up some commentary on layer two. Uh, let's go on to layer three. So with layer three, we have oh, Necronomicon fragment layer three. Oe ia, oe ku ze poncte, chokto nibli, altid luck, nerevne, io tua tanismu, senoa fayon, ed negroa leba, gne latara endect, ero lectis indentari. Rala Nathamirian, Ripangamba Retia Plenty Retinith, Tom Rilipionith Nesempra Daron Idhariak Glupti, 
Sinner hat diese Mödel, Zafogion, Zonil, Ilnistrustres, Sorituolai, Trusseja, Chokta, Dait, Menapsinams, Kralt, Grentu, Kospors, Nadsermu, Harafis, Aye, Ie. The chilling details come in the final sentence, which is captured in the moment of dissolving into a new layer. Notice how the words Malanams and Nadkarams have already transformed from their more likely prior states of Thapnams and Riklermu. The Thapnams suspicions becomes Manapnams paranoia. So the Rimalekrmu, the parting, becomes Nadkarmu, which is akin to the Lacanian notion of foreclosure. Associate. So right here now we're talking about with the mu also reklamu and nereklamu. We also are having the idea of mu, Lemurian mu, and also the mufon, the dark, um, the dark place, the Saturnian dark place. So again, uh, the text seems to fade from that thought, which might be perceived to that thought which cannot be forgotten, averted, or bypassed. Again, so the spirit of forgetting and remembering, this is the forgetting of past lives. It's the, it's the uh, suspicion and paranoia that could be the, um, the ghost memories of souls pre-bodily incarnations uh, brushing against the chaos in the past, moments of the crawling chaos coming, and that kind of parting, parting from that parano paranoia is like a covering over of the whole of the Canian foreclosure is sort of there's a hole and now to foreclose upon that is like it's it's not a repression it's sort of like a void that's placed to the side right so if we think of it as Nyarlathotep as Saturnian this makes sense okay so Necronach Makan fragment layer four this is a small small fragment Abitha Kanaktrfo so Bruntal so the uh, Moldenhauer is coming here to uh, a composite word brunatal, which has to do with the successive layers of pre-erupted teeth, as in a shark. Sethra, which is famine. And Mekono on Onef, a mythical star cluster in the early universe from which a race of space beings evolved. Aside from these few words, layer four is silent. And it has been referred to as the dead layer. So if this is the dead layer, we have the teeth of the, the pre-erupted teeth of the shark. So again, we're in four dimension right here, right? Fourth dimension means uh, time factors, right? And then it could be fourth to five dimension. We're talking about uh, adjusting the timeline. So there is a concept of the tooth that is yet erupted. There's also the dead layer, so the dead tooth, as, as the shark emits the tooth, and the tooth falls to the ocean floor, that tooth is sort of a, a relic. Uh, it's shedding the teeth, right? It's shedding the teeth. And that shedding of the teeth, the mythical star cluster in the early universe from which a race of space beings evolved, shed the, the star cluster shedding planets, shedding life, right? So this is back to pre earth lore and there's a certain famine here to p p potentially when they call it the dead layer that's that kind of vampiric hunger it's undead but hungry it's the um it's the erebos from dead sons 11 the black hole beings uh that are um, conscious and yet uh somehow bound to entropic um, energy depletion, right? So this is a death, a pre-erupted shark teeth, and the shark hunger. The shark's hunger and the shark's teeth, the famine, which means the, the starvation, right? So starving out. There's probably an autof autophagy here, too, like a universal autophagy in the sense of consuming itself. The teeth erupt. There's a famine, so it's eating itself. And then that relates back to dead. And again, with when we're talking about necromantic, this is a, a key point a silent dead and sleeping dead, right? And the teeth emerge, they're cast out. There's a famine there somewhere. So you're, we're right there in that kind of undead space uh, with fragment four. With fragment five, Thanokan em eru, prendithi thrikikrekshita hiya hibna, 
nuk son nëm honte nja, mek të vim bëtësia gjrel, lok shë temp së gnadinin, lëmp të në klaglasi njua, klet tonë vi fekti, e si pe keskëto stantër tua, nuk friz do nonë së trobo, lob në nuhant, eja një ata, on minipjak, bresbe ojnë, Ragthra asmil, lehi isp, sekwa epu tisthanin, gik prasula rytnyanin, hedre priskulev, nakranayin stilna, siali bafti unyawanal, teksi mik prikran prikran obdal lakti arefe. So from layer 5, the invocation of the thraknon im is the nine corpse-bodied nuksananam thot where the eyes are not able to unsee the loksonap signal lanoth thoth. So here we have the thoth of lidnan thoth, which is like nyarlathoth thoth tep thoth. Thoth is in there, right? So the nyarlathotep, we have this syllable. Attention is paid to the om min minipak brisbyoyin, or the gaze of the unblinking eyes of the oin. The gaze of the unblinking eyes of the Oin, which is numbered in endless, which number is endless. Uh, the matter of fact mention of the nepranan signal or the consummation in genocide is disur disturbingly disconcerting. So yeah, here we have many many details. There's an unblinking eye, and the eye that cannot unsee a certain kind of chaotic form. So it's like the rising chaos, the nine corpse body. Right, so the nine corpse body is an undulating, undead thing, which is sort of a reference to Nyarlathotep's crawling chaos form. The eyes are not able to unsee, because that chaos reaches beyond the physical form. It reaches beyond the astral form, and it goes back to um, Azathoth, perhaps. Right, this is a link back from Nyarlathotep to Azathoth. Again, it's fear-based because of the frightening nature of these things. Right, the idea is. Um, it's disconcerting to think of uh, the distance between us and the astral beings, between us and the dreamlands, right? The onyx of Salafius, like what is this technology of the dreamlands that we only visit in the vestibule of dreams, right? And then finally going out to that gaze of the unblinking eye of Oin. And this consummation in genocide, this is sort of this the idea of, I mean, it's kind of like oddly the way, I guess what's coming to me is the never-ending story, right? Where the idea is the book unread will fade away. And I think that some of that is can be seen as, um, you know, there's worlds of the dreamlands and there must be a, a, an engine or a politics in the dreamlands. And perhaps it's in the courts of Selephius and what the onyx somehow symbolizes this as the as the crystalline structure uh, that keeps the um, the unblinking eye on the unseeable, which is the cycle of, uh, of of ideas dropping off and dreams dropping off, but then they're always kind of roiling, and that roiling is the crawling chaos. So yeah, that'll be uh, layer five. Let's move on to layer six. Sinin ogni nineskmunti laranya lagralum epoxin letru kot there is sorrow here in the estranged sky-fallen parent or the ingratitude of the subterranean child, indicated by the waning away of the direction of the Cthulhu head nebula, which sits in the position of the zenith of the fragment. The sorrow and loss speaks of both the genealogy of Cthulhu and perhaps the dread lineage tied to Yogg-Sothoth and Azathoth in the formless deep of space. This is the foreclosure of the name of the father, that is in psychosis, both in the call of Cthulhu as well as in the madness of Rilia. So here Moldenhauer is talking about the, uh, I mean, uh, Balsamo, uh, here we're talking to Moldenhauer's psychoanalysis of Rilia, which speaks th to the fragment's nature uh, in a dread lineage tied to Yog sothoth and Azathoth in the formless deep of space. So you have this um, uh, signifying chain, Lacan would call it. The fallen parent, 
and then the child and the parent cycling through time, and this chains back through history, and the zenith goes up to the Cthulhu head nebulae, and this sorrow and loss speaks to the genealogy of Cthulhu. So again, the dead, the dread lineage, is also this broken hegemony of um, yeah, Hermetis, Hermes Trismegistus, Atlantis or Hermes Trismegistus, Egypt, Atlantis, Lemuria, and then back through the chain of the Cthulian deities, let's call it. So there's something of loss here. There's something, um, the estrangeness and the madness of it. Perhaps that's what the call of Cthulhu is. And the reason why Rilia brings madness while, while it rises, but then it sinks to the unconscious and the, and the madness subsides. So again, uh, it's a, a bit of an insight into Lovecraft's psyche, right? Where we, he had the fear rising, like a paranoia would rise, and then the paranoia would set, and this is the sunken subconscious. It's not integrated, it's a shadow. So it's really, and then shadow brings us back to Saturn, right? So this is... Um, uh, lots here about the, in, the about the uh, emotional weight of the unsurety of our thrownness into the world, uh, given these other cycles that we might perceive. And here is like kind of a foothold into the cult of the crawling chaos. Right. The idea here is there's an estrangement from the natural order. There's an estrangement and a loss. There's an idea of the shadow rising. Um, there's a mad madness at the core of it. And somehow we're left to navigate that. Right? And there's a bit of a sorrow in there. And I think that tone of sorrow can be comforting, perhaps. Next layer is uh, Necronomicon layer 7. Uh, another small fragment. Rites minonant hamshush. So we have the familiar Ie, like Ia, the waxing position counter to the southern phasing Lovecraft silhouette, indicates a loss of the symbolic and the repression of the real. The personal history has become an indication of the Hegelian dialectical materialism and the resultant master slave relation. Yet here, our planet, as indicated by the place of providence, is in the position of the slave with the master being elusive or dead as a dead dreaming of the long sleep of Cthulhu. Now, again, this is kind of references to uh, Call of Cthulhu. Uh, what is repressed here is life, the symbol of awakening from a sleep that is dead. So here we have dead sleeping Cthulhu, death may die, right? And the idea here is uh, there is an order to uh, the way Death is the gateway out of corporal life. And sleep is a rest from corporal life. But it's also the antennae to the next, like, so the vestibule of sleep can lead to the realms of the dreams. And then what dreams may come of death may die, right? So the idea here is um, that kind of relation to uh, we're, we're chained into the um, Sat Saturnian chains of time, Saturnian chains of aging, right? That's the material um, anchor, and the anchor's chain goes up, and some of it mm, seems to be tethered to some of these past entities, right? So, so I think that Nyarlathotep would hold the chain to the cultists of the crawling chaos, but it doesn't mean we're we're we are those cultists. I think it's just a matter of indicating. Um, that there are, uh, like I guess, haunters in the dark, kind of, right? There are something beyond the, beyond the astral form that looks at the astral form like we may look at, you know, the physical form from the astral form. So it's sort of like a nested, nested eggs here. Uh, and this is where there's some kind of relation back to uh, something in the position of the dead dreaming of Cthulhu links here. So that's layer seven. And then we'll wrap up with uh, Necronomicon fragment layer eight. Another short one, the smallest layer of the fragment. A thick cistesni, silisle, si. 
uh, the last exploded diagram is considered um, should not be considered the bottom layer. This is where the small layers have been uh, footnoted here as fractional dimension numbers. Like, for example, this fragment lies somewhere between dimension 2.7 and dimension 3.9, with layer 8 resting somewhere between the fractional strata of dimensions 3.57 and 6.91. So again, now we're talking about fractal dimensions, fractal nature, which is mean, okay, between, think of like, for example, a fractal on a flat plane seems to have a depth to it, right? But the fact that we can't navigate the coastline is, is that sort of infinite curve falling into itself, again, which again is foreclosure, right? But that infinite curve flowing into itself can have a, um, have a topology, right? So here we're saying fragment 1 is between 3.9 and 2.7. Fragment 8 is between 3.5 and 6.1. It says, of course, this is only a theory, and at this point it does make for some striking possibilities. In theory, the possibility of fractional dimensionality lends itself to speculation of an endless series of layers between the given eight layers of the Necronomicon fragment. So again, the, cr the crawling chaos, um, perhaps mathematically indicated by that of a transcendental number, endless but non-repeating, so too can these fissures of the Necronomicon fragment, uh, again, crawling chaos. So we get to something where number stops making sense, uh, unless we had a bit more mind to think through it. Right? So the careful attention must be paid to the actual fissures or so-called coastlines of the fragment. And this is more indication of uh, topics covered by, or introduced, let's say, by Moldenhauer in the um, archaeology of Yog sothoth And these will actually be covered in Volume 3, which is the alchemy of Azathoth, which is uh, really getting into this kind of multidimensional topic. So that, that comes out of Alchemy of Azathoth. And there's the uh, pestilence that fails to descend, finally. Only two clues indicate the overall framework of the transcendental factions. Uh, if so, the careful attention must be paid to the actual fissures or so-called coastlines of the fragments. And those coastlines uh, that are being discussed are in the archaeology of yogg sothoth in which we see um, the topological representations of the Necronomicon fragment as, um, as spatial, right? Which and they could be, um, they could represent structures, microscopic, submicroscopic, or even stellar scale. So these topological fissures provides the ruptures that allow the fractal layers to emerge. Only two clues indicate the overall framework of the transcendental fractions, the synetheth of the corruption and the selenical death of the pestilence that falls or descends. So again, this is the Gnostic falling, right? The poimandris. We have it in the Corpus Hermeticum, the idea of um, uh, things are falling from the, a more spiritual state to a denser state. So again, this is the pre- Lemurian, Mu, Lemuria, Atlantean, Egyptian, Hermetic, modern materialist, and then on onward, right? So I think this is sort of, uh, this is uh, important in that it, it's introducing this idea um, uh, into the fractional, um, fractional dimensions, which is quite, it's very disturbing to think of mathematically. And it's very hard to follow, but if one in earnest takes a look at it, you can see how this is, um, you know, a analog of the higher dimensional math shadow shapes that don't really have a three space perfect interpretation. And this is why it's kind of edging into that crawling chaos space, right? In, you know, at a, at a higher dimensional projection, you could see some of these partial spaces, but it starts to blow away the, the ideas of dimensions at all, and it's more of a continuum, a, a fractional dimensional continuum. And I guess the only way you can think of it is the number line with integers and real numbers and then imaginary numbers and then um, quaternions and octonians, and then you have imaginary parts of those. It starts to get very, um, very rarefied. 
So that will wrap up the Necronomicon. We will come back uh, for Lecture 3 and discuss the uh, Providence Cipher texts. So we'll look forward to Lecture 3. And on the Providence Cipher text, these will relate again to Nyarlathotep. They are spells to Cthulhu, but they uh, most likely are delivered from the point of view of this cult of crawling chaos, the cult of crawling chaos to Nyarlathotep.